That's why I really like the... Yeah. And, and I like the fact it has so much texture to it. Like, you can grab it, mm. and it has texture. It's just like the Hex Mat. Although I'm partial to Tom Hanks, well, I guess any designer would be partial to Tom Design. I'm very like, partial to this. I like the Hex. Yeah. So what does this look like to you guys? Does this look like a mod meet? It sure is. We're on the road to Ragnar Oktoberfest, and this is Nerf News from the Hour Ranch, episode 26. With the crew from Manhattan Beach Nerf Club, we got Skyler, we got La Wolf Riven, and we got Cartea. We're all here, and the I got wolf some... Riven. The Wolf Riven. Yes. Riven. Corey, Riven. The Wolf Riven. Yes! It's Riven. Corey the Wolf. Riven. Uh, Riven. 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 Therapy, Chris. <laughs> therapy. Therapy. Oh! So sorry, I messed up your name, and everyone's gonna see it now. It's just I'm not making fun of you, Chris. I'm making fun of Corey. <laughs> He's the wolf. Right He's the wolf man. <laughs> As you can see, we're just having a really good time and having a lot of fun. And this is a pretty good week for news because uh, we got a few uh, really good developments coming up. And uh, let me tell you about the first one. And uh, the first one's pretty cool because it was a blast that came out a while back called the Voidcaster. And it was decent, but it wasn't great. We had the Voidcaster that came out, and it was limited to four rounds. It had the same, it was four, right? It was, it was like a, yeah, a four, four victory. Yeah, it was okay. four rounds. And, you know, it was front loaded, and it was disappointing. Well, now they came out with the nail biter. Walcom S7 put out a great video on it. I saw it, it was pretty funny. He referenced a couple of uh, zombie animes and stuff. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, great and, guy. He's a great guy. He's really, he's really like one of my favorite YouTubers, Walcom at Seven, and I'm hopefully gonna meet him at Ragna. I hope. And uh, this is really cool. I think it is ten rounds. From what it looks like, it looks like the same firing uh, mechanism as a Voidcaster. Ten rounds. But here's the kick, man. Here's the kick. I mean, could you imagine just doing the other? Oh, really? Zombie Strike finally makes something that's cool. Maybe I can't make those stratos stratospheric speeds. Maybe I can't do a lot of things like that. But dude, the play value on those the blasters is oh, be so nice. So nice, so nice. I Finally, mean, something really like cool. when remember when the hammer shot came out? Oh yeah, it's everybody slow. Everybody just wanted to do it with But it's them. handy. That's yeah. the thing. And so sometimes I think Mauser Fire proves that is that handiness, accuracy, everything, and the and hammer shot as well right. can overrule power by far. I mean, you can have yeah. the power. I well, have the power, but you know what? Especially if you're not going to do just NIC events. Exactly. Mo like, you're going to stock, modded stock yeah. events. You know, not everyone's crazy like Cartan, likes to throw stuff 300 feet per second at people. Why well, need it for distance, but still, you no, know. No, there's nothing wrong with that. It's always fun to go to an NIC event. And you have stuff. lots of reminders that you went for a week. You have all these <laughs> red spots all over you. Yeah, that's the best part. It's like having the chicken pox or something. You can show, hey, look, oh, war man. wounds. Next so, Boomtendo has got a deal going where he's trying to get, um, he's trying to get some 10 millimeter darts that can work in brass, uh, ready to fire. Now, you guys have seen my firing videos where I've actually fired Boomco darts out of, uh, out of a dual strike, out of, you know, a bird of prey type A, okay? The deal is, however, on Boomco darts, the heads stick, they stick to brass because they're originally made to hit these, these special sticker targets that they stick to. If anybody remembers the early Boomco commercials, a lot of people don't. I have to remind them. But um, that was in the first year that was popular. And it kind of got dropped. You know, they kind of didn't do it. it. Used to be on the front of all the blasters, all these little shield targets, and it's like, hey, yeah, you just hit my blaster. Isn't that great? Um, but which, which I still have. Which you still have. They yeah. still you still have the targets. Yeah, those are great. The new the new MA fives have at, they're actually hard plastic on the front. But from what Boomtendo tells me, they're too light. These ones have a tip on them and three ribs and can go through 10 millimeter brass, no problem. And I, I will tell you, the, the Boomco darts, there's a little advantage in long range. One, you have less of a cross section of wind. So if you got crosswind, I noticed a lot less deviation than I did the Nerf darts, the Stefans. And two, um, they go straight as an arrow. Uh, whatever the disadvantage is, is that a Nerf blaster is made for Nerf blasters. They're made for 50 caliber. So when I went to a stubby uh, dart system, you know, a stubby plunger system like this and tried to fire it, it went significantly slower. But when I went to the same diameter and longer, it, w it went faster. It, it did the kind of ranges I desired. So it takes a little bit different of a system 
to mod, and this could be important because if these darts become a thing, think about the blasters we're going to have now that are possible. I think a caliber would do extremely well with a, with, a, with 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 one of these because it's got the longer draw to it. What do you think, Corey? I'm a believer. I'm a believer too, and I think with that, um, you could start seeing some Boonco darts doing you know 180, 200 foot ranges. I mean, can you imagine that? Wow! Last week I covered a guy who put four sets of flywheels on a blaster, and he was brushless. getting brushless. Brushless, yeah, 280, 290 feet per second. Drone motors. And drone motors, just incredible, oh, you know? And my thing was, he was putting on Nerf Sniper to me, and I'm like, dude, you should make it a machine gun. I mean, a 1919 <laughs> is 308, right? Okay, my rifle at home is a 308. There you go. <laughs> Actually, it's 76251. But it's about the same time. It's just the metric version of 308, pretty much. The case is a little different in the front, but you get what I'm saying. I can fire 308 out of a German uh, HK Model 91. No problem. You know what I'm saying? Well, here you have um, uh, basically the same thing. You got you can run Sniper like Long Shot, or you can run Sniper like a Bird Prey or a Dual Strike or something like that. But you have now heavy suppression. That even if it wasn't as accurate, it's still like... <laughs> I mean, can you imagine that? What's great about the brushless, too, is that you can program it and dial it down or mm -hmm. dial it up. Dial it down, dial it up. Yeah, you can. Especially you can do in a multi stage system, yeah. dialing the ones outside a little more up than the ones down yep. here so that you're accelerating the dart. You can do all sorts of programs and play with it. And you can really. Yeah, there's a lot of flexibility there than just flat wiring in flywheel motors. These guys know a lot more about flywheels than I do. I'm a Springer nut bag. I can't help it. It's so much fun, you know. But you know, but I do see that it is a disadvantage having flywheels at such high FPS because you yeah. need more of them. You need a lot so more. Now of you them. need more battery. bigger ba bigger batteries. You also I don't need see a problem with that at all. Well, well you also need a larger blaster back. now. We have the proton pack from rival rounds, why well, can't we just have a battery pack? Well, I'm saying the higher your FPS goes, the larger your blaster needs to be, though. Yeah, I mean, so. he was carrying like two 4S's. I wonder how long those two 4S's last. I gotta ask um, um, Eric Whale. Oh, by the way, it was Eric Whale who did it. Correction, not uh, the guy who posted it. It gets confusing sometimes. But nonetheless, yeah, it, it's uh, just to make that correction. Uh, he was doing it, and um, yeah, so. It'd be really cool. I mean, if you can carry something on a rig, you can carry a Prometheus around. I mean, why can't you carry something with four flywheels and just... Yeah, yeah. I mean, crazy. Crazy. Tons of batteries. Maybe a big old proton pack. <laughs> a particle accelerator to power it. Wouldn't yeah. you love a particle accelerator to power your... You might, as, you might as well just make a rail gun. I mean, come on. They make those, you know? I wonder if you can actually put aluminum in a, in a Nerf dart and make a rail gun. I'm sure you... Wait, that'd be nuts. <laughs> aren't the old slugs dude, have washers dude. on them? I think so. Uh, that that the number six, the number six slugs. Yeah, what did that work? It would yeah, just launch the washers. They, have, have, they would just launch. Oh, oh they would just rip. Can <laughs> <laughs> <Just laughs> you imagine washer. you're firing and all of a sudden, yeah! <laughs> washer goes out. This, the dart is just there. And there's all pieces of your dart all over the barrel, and you just. <laughs> Hit Cor poor Corey with a washer oh, doing like a thousand feet per second. Now he's got a hole in it. Uh, boy, yeah, it's, it's great days coming up, folks. I tell you, the good yeah. old days are just to come. Nobody's going to let you use that anywhere. <laughs> the old days. Stone patio. He should just said cutting stone. stone. Sorry. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I can see know. that. I don't know anyone knows. Because it's definitely not wood. Go on, man. <laughs> he's so bad. This is this is who I'm stuck with, guys. Yeah. He's so mad. I'm not mad. I'm just pup set. Your pup, pup set? set? What does that mean? He's you know, plebbing like... right now. Oh. <laughs> plebbing. I made it an adjective. So, guys, this guy on Nerf Mark Welcome, his name is Joe Jugos. Oh, you're calling them out? Melted! Good job, Joe. Melted! <laughs> okay, Prometheus battery. How the hell do you melt a Prometheus battery? I'll no. tell you how. Seriously, how? No. What you did? Sorry, Joe. You must have, uh, Charlo said this, created a short circuit, but how? I'll tell you. Probably put your wire through, uh, took it positively, somehow accidentally managed to connect it to the 
other lead by also uh, not using the um, normally open side of the switch and putting on the normally closed side of the switch so that it's constantly shorting out your battery. And, uh, that's that will possible. That will short out your battery. Not your friend. I thought maybe you left it in the sun too long or something. So crazy after like he that. rewired it, all you had to do is plug in the battery. And, <laughs> and then we just shorted it out. I have a battery so yeah. full. Oh, the rep trigger for too long? Or or if it was to a switch like you said, all you had to do is press that switch. It would yep. short it out that battery. But it would still work with the uh, normal rep trigger that way. Right. Well, yeah. 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 It but depends it how you wire it. The battery. I just saw this melted front end, and I'm like, how the heck do you do that? Sorry, Jim. And I was worried, you know, is the program makes this battery weak, or is this guy really just... I mean, it's not the well, end, of the, it. it's not the end of the maybe. world. I mean, you can still lipo it. Yeah, I guess it, I guess it still works. I wouldn't lipo yeah. it in the condition it is in right now. Well, you <laughs> got to replace everything. Yeah. Yeah. Take it out. The wiring, the switch, the everything. Yeah, yeah that's what I was saying. It's not the end of the world, but you gotta spend more money. Now. It's one of those learning things. <laughs> so we're doing modding. Oh yes. Uh, we've broken long shot sleds. We fried motors. We like to mod near a fire extinguisher for that very same reason. Yeah, it happens. It does happen. So, in a nice way, in a keep going and move on way. Also, uh, I would never recommend just replacing switches. Replace all the yeah. wiring. Oh, absolutely, definitely. Yeah, go like that 60 nerve meters wiring working. is Chinese wire. You Thin don't want to use that. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it fry even even with like trust fire batteries. I've seen it fry. I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's you know. why there's all those resistors in it. Yeah. You know, once you take out those resistors, you're up in the low. That and tiny wire. Wow. That stop. I did nothing to it. That's pretty good. Yeah, that stopped That's awesome. It did nothing to awesome. it. Yeah. 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 Sometimes, <laughs> it just came like that. Sometimes, this is worse. What do you think of all these people with these fake sniper look stuff? Like the Coop was showing off and selling everybody at one. Oh, yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, last yeah this is not good. Last and then and then there's a guy on, I think his name was Cyan Williams, on uh, Nerf Sniper Community. And he was showing his off and it had a little pool handle, and that's cool. <laughs> but I'm like, okay, that's cool for like, cosplay, showing yes. off, whatever, but it's yeah. not, not for really sniping, and since you're working on a sniper right now, I thought I should, uh, ask you, what do you think? Uh, same thing, like, if it's cosplay, man, I don't know how much closer you can get that Barret and that op kit, yeah, I don't know how much closer you can Two get. Two people said, do not take this Barret outside, yeah. people for think it's real. For a practical prop. Yeah, I don't know how much closer you can get to a practical That's problem. a remarkable part of it. Right. The unremarkable part of it is how they shoot. <laughs> the yeah. Terrible. Right. You have all this aerodynamic drag. I mean, okay, I got a long barrel on here, but that's because all of this plunger tube uses all of this barrel. Yeah. <laughs> I can say the same with his setup, too. He's got a yeah. pretty nice stainless steel reinforced setup right here. Look at this. This is his setup. Oh, man. Tell us a little more about it. So... This is the powertrain of my 300 long shot. Mm -hmm. It is 17 30 seconds aluminum, about 13 and a half to 14 inches. Yep. Uh, nestled in three quarter inch stainless steel. Ah, he went stainless. I want aluminum. He stainless said, steel. I, I'm actually regretting it now. <laughs> it is like impossible. Like I could break things with this. It's impossible, man. Yeah. Um, and then uh, taped to lock it into place so it's not going to move or anything. Um, this is using the Orange Mod Works uh, bolt carrier, a uh, bolt slit. Bolt slit. Um, it's got a fiberglass. Fiberglass. Wow, well, look at this. My wisdom is rubbing off on you people. I want to yeah. see more people use my wisdom. So I didn't when think, I, die, I, I don't think I actually, regret. yeah, I don't think I actually need to fiberglass it because I, before I even did that, it, it was, was running slide. 20 kgs and 18 Kgs, no problem. Right. No flex, no problem. One of the few sleds left with a tail now. Yeah. Yeah, you know, most of your sleds don't have a tail. Right. And at the time, everybody was reveling and didn't have a tail. And now everyone's like, oh, we miss that tail. We can't want to have grime anymore. Right. You know? So there's no issues with that, but I just reinforced it just for the hell of it. Um, it is rocking an 18.5 kg gold plated turf. Yeah. So this is one of the Aussie ones. One of the Aussie ones, indeed. With the plunger head having. Uh, probably like 
a millimeter of fiberglass. Oh, you sat across the front of it? By about a oh, millimeter. Oh, kick ass. I did that on my bird and stuff. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that's all you need is that extra millimeter. That's yeah. it. A few licks. It's, and it keeps from breaking. Exactly. You can see, I mean, it's covered in goop right now, but you can see that it's Yeah, like but this is the way you want to dupe your, your right aluminum tube blasters right here. That's, you really want that's that. the end of the plunger tube. The thing on top is fiberglass. It's yeah. about a millimeter of yeah, fiberglass. Here, let's show that really close here. See, he's using a fiber tape based fiberglass. But like I do on my bird of prey and stuff, look at that. So when it hits, it it, it, it it distributes the weight of the impact completely. It never breaks. I mean, I have a 3D printed head in there and it's not broken. Yeah. Because it's fiberglass on the front. I mean, it'd be great when they make, if they ever make a kit that uses some of this fiberglass technology, people are gonna really be like, wow, it's light and strong like aluminum too. Right. But maybe maybe the next year or two, who knows. Maybe um, somebody else will hire Cartea. <laughs> <laughs> you never know, right? Yeah, and the plastic is Orange Mod Works Stage 1 mm -hmm. uh, plastic, except for the back cap, that's soft. Is it pretty tough? Let's yeah. See. It's their uh, polycarbonate or? Oh, yeah, polycarbonate's a way down. You got to, you know, it's going to be plastic, it's got to be polycarbonate. ABS is just, uh, right. and that's an orange mud works. Uh, this is their right. expanded plunger tube. Yep. For just you know, straight aluminum. Oh, it's so that. smooth. It's so smooth. I don't see any exclusion marks no. on it whatsoever. No, like no valley, no ripple. Gee, yeah, that's fine. And this is my, uh, what do you call it? Sleeper breach specific to half weights. Uh-huh. Second oh, version oh, that I made. Figure, figure going on. Yeah, so it's the second version oh. that I made of this. You hear me talk about him a lot, and you can see why. Yes. So that if you take a half weight, the head uh -huh. will only go that far because there's a pusher inside. Right, right. So it's, it's right there. So it's like a semi-sleeper almost. Yep. Yeah, okay. so there's a pusher inside, and if you look inside of that pusher, there's two notches for air release. Oh, nice. So there's no vacuum issues vacuum. whatsoever. So there's two notches. It goes down to 17, no, half inch. Half inch, right. All the way through to the end, and it's fiberglass on the end. And it's fiberglass back here. So you got fiberglass on fiberglass. Yeah. I'm telling you, revolutionary material, man. Yeah. Revolutionary. So it's 100% seal also, because unlike a traditional sleeper breach, where you only seal on one millimeter, mm -hmm. it seals on, like, 10 or 11 mils. Right, right. Like on this one, I'm sealing a whole inch. Yeah. And it, it does. It so does. It's 100% air seal. Because it does not just do this air seal, it's also orientation. It keeps it straight. Mm -hmm. The more you have to hold on to it, the more everything's lining up together. And I noticed that on like a sharp fire, it's definitely on a sharp fire. You need to have it, it needs to be deeper. Um, also, like his is also sleeper, his is also deeper. When he does it like a sleeper, I do mine like a pusher. Yeah. Um, when you sharp fire. So when you push it yeah. in together, uh -huh. Oh, nice, right in there. Yeah. Look at that spacing. It's like the perfect. head is completely clear. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a cut right in there. That's not the one. So it goes uh, this, and then it's just locked in place. It's uh, mm -hmm. gorgeous. It's, but I do see a lot of people going, oh, well, look, I got this fiber blaster now, and I'm running a set in the and I'm yeah. like, go to one of our wars. Yeah, I call this my 300 long shot because it does well over 300. Well over 300. Kind of like Big Blue. So he, like I have Big Blue, he has this blaster, and we're always at me to play. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I think that's the plunger right He there. also made a pretty pretty wicked Merlin. And I got to see it today. And it's, oh, yeah. Where's that? Right? Woo! Yeah. Pretty nice. I might put a sleeve on mine, because this also fits my swan barrels. Uh -huh. I might put a sleeve on that. Okay. So he took out all the glue on this thing. See? I, you heard me talk about it, right? Well, here it is. Look at that. Whoa. It's enough to make you go crazy. Yes, it is. Especially if you're in the business end. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When uh, my long shots all put together with all the accessories on it, it's about seven pounds. Oh, yeah. Lots of metal in there. Beautiful. Yeah, mine's about six. I think mine's about seven because I got that bigger scoop. It's that. Yeah, and that stainless steel. Oh, yeah, stainless steel instead of the aluminum. Wow. So we're painting this one today. We're painting this one today, and we're either going to make it like an anodized red. One of these colors. Or an anodized blue. Shiny. I like this one. I like the red one. I love the red one. My next, my next long shot is going to be a red. For sure. My next piece is going to be red. This little pal is definitely going to be red. For sure. So this 
one's all press, the other side needs to be press. Yeah. Well, at any rate, this is uh, the Manhattan Beach Surf Club. This is Alan Taylor, Corey Riven. Riven, right, Riven? Right. I got it right? Okay, good. I'm terrible with names. No, and amazing. of course, Kurt Raven. Raven. <laughs> it's a wolf man, either way, we don't care. And um, this was an episode of The Owl Ranch, episode 26. And don't you go changing, or I'll find you. And now you really gotta worry, because now I got friends. Ha 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 ha!